The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to Entrepreneurs Ascending. This isn't just a podcast. This is a call to action for all entrepreneurs who are tired of seeing their businesses and communities suffer while big business continues to grow by the billions. We challenge you to apply the content of our time together to create businesses that your clients can't resist, your employees love to work for, and your communities can depend on. Now is the time for Entrepreneurs Ascending. All right. Hey, welcome to Entrepreneurs Ascending. Uh, this is Matt Barbie, and I have a ghost guest, not ghost, guest here with me today, uh, Joe Chiba. <laughs> hey, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you, man. You how, how you doing? Doing well? Doing well. Doing well. Good. Good. You're looking good. You're looking sharp. Thank you. Looking awake. That's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> good. Good. I've got my yerba mate tea in my her uh, uh, Hulk uh, uh, cup here, so yeah. That yeah. Fails. <laughs> it's not reflective of my mood, though. I swear. So I mean, maybe I'm getting a little hangry. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. But anyway, all right. So this is uh, Entrepreneurs Ascending, and uh, it's so great having you here with us today. Again, this this show is not just like another podcast, just another show. This is really about a call to action. This is about the, the fact that small business is really being crushed by big business. And we as entrepreneurs, as problem solvers, we need to we need to take in all the information that we can and apply it to our businesses every day, every step of the way uh, to, to have that competitive edge. And uh, one of the big things that, that we love to talk about is like relationship and about people. And so, you know, that's going to be kind of a, a big part of, of what we're talking about today, especially in the first part. We're going to be talking about living a life of significance and enjoying that life of significance and, and what that means and, and how to do that for you. And then the second part, we're going to be digging into risk management and risk management for small business. Risk management is one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, whatever pops into your head, you might try to think about and, or, or, I mean, it's, it's really though, like it's, it's a skill to, to be developed. And Joe here, he, he kind of asks or a acts as kind of a risk manager kind of a, uh, for the, the small businesses that he serves because he works in the insurance realm. And, and a lot of people don't necessarily collect the, connect the dots between insurance and risk management, but you know, as a small business, you, you typically can't pay for a risk manager. I mean, the big businesses will have like risk managers who are doing analysis. They have tables. They actually, they, they do statistics on the, the likelihood of, because I, I actually, I've, I've helped Fortune 500 companies implement risk management strategies and, and uh, improve them and all that. So, so I mean, I, I love this topic, but small business owners, you, you, you typically don't necessarily have that. So, Having an ally like Joe is uh, is is one of your, your your best business advisors that you can have on the table, uh, around that table uh, for you. So so glad to have Joe here today. But uh, yeah, so let's let's dig into to though like significance. Like what, Joe? You, you happen to be here, so I'll, I'll ask you what what is like living a life of significance mean to you? You know when I when I think of that word. I just break it down. I think of about, you know, what is the purpose, you know, um, you know, significance is I think having impact, you know, and mm -hmm. I know with, with my business and living a life of significance, I feel is, you know, really just trying to think about more than just yourself, you know, uh, focus on, you know, the people around you, the people that are in your lives, whether it's your family, your clients, you know, and just you know, trying to, trying to have an impact, you know, positive impact on those, those folks around you. Yeah. I, th I think that's, that's a really good, good way of talking about it and, and thinking about it. You know, what, what impact are you having? And, and that's another way people talk about it. What's the impact. But you know, to me, like that, that sense of significance, so many people struggle with that sense of significance. I mean, look at Facebook. 
it, it, you have everybody trolling everybody because it's like they they just want to feel significant. They want their their opinion to matter, and so you know they they get on there and and they blast somebody else trying to trying to make themselves feel significant in the moment. And and it's and it's sad because there's so many better healthier ways to do it. Um, so I remember a, a little while back, uh, uh, Tim Tebow did a, uh, different spelling Tebow, but, uh, <laughs> no, relation. no relation, no relation. Um, you know, he did, I, do what? But I like Tim Tebow. For the right. Record. Right. Yeah. For the, set the record straight. Yeah. yeah. Um, he did a, he did a talk on, uh, significance and, um, he, he brought up, that picture that Kevin Carter did. It was a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer. He, he won the Pulitzer Prize for this. And uh, uh, Roxy, Roxy, thank you so much for being on the sh- with us, uh, doing the, the engineering for the show today. Can you can you show that picture for us, Roxy? Yeah. So this is the picture. So here's the thing. Kevin was uh, was down there. And I believe he was with like the African Defense Force, um, but he was kind of a I think he was an amateur photographer at the time, uh, and and he saw this little girl, but he was told not to, to touch anybody or, or interact with anybody because of, you know, disease and just, you know, sickness. And, and, and so he, he saw this little girl. Thank you, Roxy. He saw this little girl and there's that vulture sitting behind her because she was moving so slow as she was trying to go from her village to uh, the, the food bank uh, and, or the, the, you know, where she was trying to get a meal. Obviously she was starving. And, you know, he went over there and kind of like shoot away the vulture, but it kind of came back. And then like he did that a couple of times and then he left. He ended up getting the Pulitzer prize for that picture. Four months later, he ended his own life. And it was just too much to bear. Just, just thinking about the fact that like he could have had an impact there. And, and maybe he brought some awareness to it, but that little girl in that moment, he, he didn't really help. He just left her there because it seemed like the price was just too much. So, you know, to me, that's a, it's a great example of where, you know, you, you have these moments in your life. I mean, moment by moment, an opportunity to be significant in somebody else's life. And sometimes we're just so caught up in, in our own concerns and, and anxieties and the next thing that's going to, you know, coming down the pike or, or the problem that we had yesterday that's still haunting us that we, we miss out on those things. So, so Joe, like what, what are some things that you do, you know, to try to, to kind of recenter yourself and think and, and bring yourself back to like, how do I have more significance in people's lives? Yeah, I think I just, um, you know, I, I think about how fast life goes by, you know, with, with business, you're juggling a lot of different things. Um, yeah. You're wearing a lot of different hats in the course of the day. And, you know, sometimes it's, um, you really yeah. have to build your business to where you, you've got time to focus, you know, and think about intentionally about, you know, the call you're going to make and the impact you're going to have. And, you know, what questions may be there, you know, just um, being prepared and being there in the moment. Um, because, you know, I know I've been on calls where, you know, I was distracted going into the call, you know, just ending one conversation, the phone rings and I'm, I jump right into another one. And, you know, it's, it's good to be focused and intentional, you know, and know that every conversation has meaning, you know, and, um, you know, just, yeah. just be there. Um, you know, everyone deserves that focus and, you know, just making sure you build your business so that, you know, you can deliver that kind of, you know, attention and focus. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, you know, I, I like what you said there about kind of taking that moment too. So like yesterday, I kind of, yeah, it was yesterday. I kind of woke up a little bit of a funk. Um, you know, I was, I was working with somebody and, and we had found a really great candidate. And uh, unfortunately, that person ended up taking a position somewhere else. Um, you know, so I don't know. I, I was for some reason it was bothering me probably more than it should because they're you know we, you know we're 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 working and we've got a lot more candidates too. But you know it's just kind of like you know maybe a little bit of empathy for the clients and just like man I know he's 
he was really excited about it and ah, it kind of sucks, you know? So I know, I guess I was kind of waking up yesterday and thinking about it. Um, and, uh, but I, I had to kind of like recenter myself, you know, and, and, uh, you know, because I didn't want that going into all of my other meetings. And I didn't want it to slow me down from helping him with the, the next thing. Right. And so, um, one thing that I found that helps me, and this can be, I think, taken with a spiritual, uh, in a spiritual way, or, you know, it can be just done through kind of like meditation, but, um, taking that moment before I, I step into a meeting with somebody else and, and kind of, you know, I, I, I kind of just ask for some guidance and like, okay, how can I be more present for this person? You know, how can I, you know, feed into this person's life and help this person in this moment? Like what, what, what does this person need the most? And, and just, and, and I, and I use it kind of a spiritual, I ask for kind of spiritual guidance, but I think it can also be kind of an affirmation if, if spirituality is not your thing. Um, you know, it can also be kind of an affirmation or a reminder, like before you go in, how help me or, or, or before I go in there, I, I just think about, okay, I, I need to look for what this person needs in this moment. Even for like a sales meeting, you know, I've been in, in, in sales meetings where, you know, I, I, I realize that like there's something else that this person kind of needs before they, they work with me. And if I can be honest and true with myself about, okay, how can I positively impact this person as opposed to trying to close the deal? And when they're, when they're, I can tell they're kind of not really ready for it, or maybe they kind of need something else. Um, you know, it, it, it helps me to be more, you know, I think, a, a more significant impact with that person. So is that kind of like what you were talking about there, Joe? It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just, I'll mention, you know, there, there is a scripture that, you know, I've, I've read, you know, that helps keep me focused. It's Philippians um, chapter two, verses three and four. And it says, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Yeah. Um, not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Like, yeah. it's just, it's really good to, like you said, you know, take a minute, refocus and make sure that, you know, your intention is to help the other person not, you know, focus so much on, you know, what you're doing for your business. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I think when mm -hmm. we start with that, you know, we, we start with that first, you know, we're always going to be on a better, more focused and, you know, and, and better intended. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so too. And I think there's kind of looking at things at, at a bigger picture too. You know, there's, there's moment by moment where if we're going to interact with somebody to think about that. And I think that we need to, and, and, and let me take one quick step back, you know, cause I, I think that, um, you know, we, we think about business and we think about relationships there. And, but I mean, I, I know it, it can, when you get home, it can be hard to leave some of that stuff at the office or, you know, in your home office or <laughs> on the computer, wherever it might be. But it's just important. It's just as important to do that, like with your family and, and your loved ones, I think, you know, cause I mean, you know, they've got stuff going on too. And, and I mean, I, I know it, it, that it can be hard with all the, as, especially as a business owner, you've got like the weight of the world on your shoulders. And sometimes you just want to go home and, and just, and, and just chill, you know, but, but I, I, I try to take heart and, 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 and this, this idea of significance is, is really been something that's kind of like bouncing around in my head a lot more lately too. Cause because I think about like with my my daughters or my wife, I, I, I and and if there's something that's like distracting me or something like that, I'm like, I want them to know that they're significant to me. I want them to know that they're significant in my life. How can I, how can I help them know that, you know? And 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 that kind of helps me as kind of a mantra when I go home, you know. That's good. Yeah. So. But there's also kind of that bigger picture because I know like a lot of people have been struggling I, I, with with their own like mission, like their own mission in life, uh, their own mission with their business. You know, they're kind of going through the motions, you know, it, as it, with what you do, you're an insurance agent. And, and I know that a lot of times, 
it can feel like there's a lot of insurance agents out there, you know, and, and you can it feel like people's only call, people are only calling you to try to get the lowest rate or something like that, right? But you, know, you want to have a more significant impact on their lives. So, like, how do you relate, you know, what you do back to, like, your own kind of, like, mission, that impact that you want to have, you know, overall as, as the bigger mission? Sure. Well, you know, I watch the same commercials that my clients watch. You know, <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to name any names, but, you know, that's uh, – marketing you know it's really just uh basing yeah. the value on cost and you know a lot of folks haven't experienced you know a, a loss um a claim that they weren't properly protected so um you know it's uh mm -hmm. until that happens they don't always see the value but you know i i do see those those claims situations you know so i know what happens when you don't have the appropriate coverage and yeah. You know, that's why, you know, it's so important to go through the details with folks and make sure they understand. So, you know, you're not just looking at that bottom number there um, as as the uh, the biggest consideration, you know, because yeah. lowest cost doesn't always equate to best value. So, you know, yeah, showing them the, the the application of, you know, the coverages and giving them claim scenarios, you know, those are usually helpful. Um, mm hmm kind of drive home that value and why they need certain coverages yeah yeah so uh, trying to 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 figure out how you're going to help them to protect themselves right and, and protect their families you know should the unthinkable happens so it's kind of that idea of of uh helping them to see them what they might not see and and protect what uh, protect them now i think that's good i mean you know and and for me you know the name of the, my my coaching company is Time for Success, and and it's interesting because there's there's a difference between success and and significance, and even kind of going back to that picture, the the gentleman you know Kevin uh, Kevin Carter, he uh, he was he was successful. I mean he got a Pulitzer Prize for that, but he didn't feel like it was significant or in a, in a way that was important to him. Because, you know, I think that there's other people out there who who might have a different perspective on on that, you know, maybe bringing awareness to the world or something like that. I, yeah, certainly. Um, but uh, but for him and for what he wanted in his life, while it was successful, it wasn't significant. How, how would you tease those two apart, Joe? Uh, uh oh, <laughs> somebody sneaking in. <laughs> yeah, probably should have put the sign on the outside of my door. <laughs> right, but, right. Um, Recording, keep out. Yes. Um, you know, there's, I, I think, um, you know, there's different stages of, of your business. Um, you know, in the beginning, I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of demand. There was always demands, you know, that, that keep you focused on um, being successful. Mm -hmm. um, but just like that gentleman found out, you know, it's, um, you know, he, that may have, you know, the accolades that he received and, you know, um, the notoriety from that was not what he interpreted as significant. You know, he yeah. sounds like he, he, there was a lack of, you know, fulfillment, um, or purpose in what, you know, happened with that picture. And, um, I, I think it's, uh, there's a lot of folks that get to, you know, it just I get focused on the wrong things, you know, um, and it's easy to do because of the demands of a business. You know, you've got financial obligations, you've got employees, you've got, you know, all these things that um, you're thinking of other people and you have to hit these goals, you know, to be able to, to keep the business, you know, moving forward. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think that mission and really understanding your purpose um, on the front end of that is, is going to provide a better you know, more fulfillment uh, for you, your employees, for, you know, your clients, you know, having, you know, um, that's, that's what comes to mind, you know, when I'm thinking about that picture and, and that gentleman, you know, having, you know, being so depressed to the point of suicide. Um, yeah. I, I don't, you know, I'm sure he had some regrets, but um, obviously, but it's, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, 
So, yeah, for me, like the difference between success and significance, I, I mean, again, you know, the company time for success, I really want, I mean, I, I really want for my clients to feel significant. Um, and I want them to feel significant in their own ways, you know, because I think that there's that, that the societal pressures of what success should be. But if that's not really necessarily important to you, then I think that can kind of leave you feeling hollow. Like that wasn't really significant for me in my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and I think that significance, you know, you know, success can be, I think, yeah, those, those, those accolades or, or maybe hitting a goal, hitting a certain mark with a certain goal that you had, it could be a financial goal, but you know, did you, how did you impact others along the way? You know, was it, was it really meaningful in, in how you kind of felt like your, 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 your you know, mission for the world and, and how you wanted to, to improve other people's lives or, or build relationships, you know, or did you, did, did, did you have that impact that you wanted to have? So, yeah. And, and I think it's an important distinction. Um, I mean, as we saw, it was important for, uh, you know, Mr. Carter, uh, in that example. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I typically, when I, when I work with people, I, I encourage you to, to, to sit some time and sit down and think about like, okay, what is your, your mission and your vision and what are your values? And, uh, and, and really, and, and we, I think we had mentioned it, uh, was it last time we talked a little bit about the, the wheel of success and, and looking at different factors in your, in your life, uh, the 12 different factors. And, um, and really to me, that's about like, okay, you know, figuring out where, where life has some more, some, some, some more meaning to you and, and, and trying to figure out like where you, you, you want it to be. What does a perfect 10 look like? So even like with the vision, like the, the difference between like a mission and vision, like a vision to me is, is like taking a, a, trying to get a picture of the future of the world. Like after you've achieved your mission, if you've, if, if you've achieved your mission, had the impact that you, you, you wanted to have, how has the world changed or the community? Maybe your vision is, is, is around a community and, and you want to see this community that you, you work in, that your business is in and, you know, have, and maybe you can envision like the parks that maybe you, you've built, you know, that maybe they've got your name on a placard because, you know, you've left that, that legacy, you know, maybe there's a, a, a road named after you because of the impact that you had in that local, in that local district or, or, you know, maybe, maybe the, the schools are, are, are bigger, better, you know, have, maybe you, you donated a bunch of computers so you can imagine, you know, the technology and, and the systems that are in there for the students, uh, maybe a nonprofit that you really care about has a, a, you know, has a bigger reach, you know, maybe you can, you know, imagine all the, the smiles and all the lives that the people have touched, you know, through that nonprofit that you've even worked through. Um, you, know, I, you know, those are some of those things where I think like, if, if you really want to have significance, picturing that future, just trying to get an image of it in your mind and trying to describe it as, in as much detail can be, can be really powerful in terms of like a, a force that, that, cause we always talk about like drive, what drives you, what pushes you. But like, I'm like, what, what pulls you, you know, <laughs> what's pulling you towards that future that you want to see. And those, those, um, those thoughts. And I've, I've done things like a mind map where you kind of you yeah. know, spin off these different, and, I don't know about you, but I, those really give me energy. You know, it's, it's a fun, you know, thing to kind of work through. And, yeah. and I don't know that everyone does that to that extent. That's, I like that, you know, you're looking at your vision and if you achieved it, you know, what would the world look like around you? That's yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah. You know, what is it? Cause I mean, to me, that's that significance. What's the impact that you had? So, so I, I encourage you, we're going to go into part two here in a second. I encourage you as a listener, again, take that, write out your vision, write it right write out. Like imagine everything, you know, all the impacts that you could have on your family and, you know, what college did your kids go to and, and, you know, how did you help them to maybe start their own businesses or, or whatever that vision is that you have, like, like write it out, describe it out and, and figure out what, what pulls you 
in, into that future of that that significance that you can have in other people's lives. So we're going to take a quick break uh, and play uh, the the for the sponsor. But for, I just want to let you know part two. Risk management for small business, and and no, we're not going to tell you what insurance policies you should, should get or something like. That. It's not going to it's not going to be like that. We're actually going to talk to you about how to go about developing those risk management skills. What are some steps that you can start taking? So, stay tuned. It's going to be really, really good, really, really helpful. And uh, Roxy, can you go ahead and and run the commercial? Have you been suffering from chronic pain, disease, or sleep disorders? Did you know that 75 to 90% of disease is caused by inflammation in the body? The sad truth is, most doctors just treat symptoms rather than finding and fixing root causes of inflammation. If you want to fix your health problems, then finding and fixing the cause of the inflammation is a must. It's time to demand this for your health care and start living life to its fullest again. Book a discovery appointment with the Functional Health Team founder, Dr. Flora, to get your answers ASAP at www.functionalhealthteam.com. All right, and we're back. And, and honestly, uh, Dr. Flory uh, has helped me uh, with some some things that, that uh, you know, I've been you know, struggling with pain and and, uh, and and stuff like that. So I definitely encourage you, um, think, think outside the box a little bit. Don't just think pills. Don't just think medicine. You know, there's, there's a cause of inflammation in your body. Dr. Flory helps you find that. So please, you know, give Dr. Flory a call. Um, all right. And ra- running into, uh, we're going to run, jump right into uh, risk management in your business. And, um, and, and so Joe, what, what is, what is risk management? I think there's a, a lot of misconceptions about what that is. So Joe, what, what is risk management? When I think of it, I think of it as more um, just looking at, you know, the risk that, that we all face, you know, every, every business has different risks. Um, you know, their mm-hmm. operations look different, but, you know, just looking at those, um, evaluating them, you know, and, and having a plan, you know, to lessen or mitigate those, you know, mm-hmm. those opportunities for those things to happen. So it's, it's just really, uh, you know, looking, looking at the business, looking at, at what your operations look like and, and figuring mm-hmm. out where those, where some of those, um, you know, challenges you know, come in. That's good. So, so it's kind of about like identifying those things that, that might occur, you know, those little surprises, uh, especially in business that might be expensive or, or I guess might decrease or, or might, heck, might you stop, might, might impact your ability to function and operate and uh, figuring out ways to either prevent them or mitigate or repair, fix it. Right. Okay. Why do you think that this is, uh, so important, such an important topic for people to really take seriously. Well, I, I, you know, just looking at, at my, my business and my clients, you know, and kind of seeing the things they go through on the day to day, you know, I know there's, there's opportunities for them to, you know, um, protect, you know, their clients, um, protect their employees, you know, there's things that they can do, you know, to help lessen those risks. And, um, yeah. you know, just, just talking through some of those things, um, is helpful. Um, you know, a lot of times these business owners, they know their business, you know, better than, than most. And, you know, they've got ideas, you know, and, and, and just kind of talking through what they're doing, you know, um, to help mm-hmm. protect, you know, is, is, uh, it's valuable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and just kind of thinking through working with clients, um, there are things that can completely shut you down. And if, if you don't take some time to, to, you know, figure out what those are and figure out how to prevent them or, or figure, figure out a, a way to fix them. Actually, uh, I, I love that exercise. You, have you ever done the, um, that, uh, uh, Tim Ferriss fear setting exercise? Are you familiar with that? I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what, what was your experience with that? I didn't take, I didn't do the assessment, um, but I, I'm familiar with Tim Ferriss. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the, the fear setting is kind of where you even look at um, what potential fears you have, like that could slow you down or stop you or, or keep you immobile, you know, take it from taking action. 
And, uh, and that's kind of on the psychological, mental, emotional side, uh, maybe even spiritual, but, but then you, you say, okay, so what, you know, what likelihood could it have? What likelihood is it that this could happen? You know, what was that situation look like? How can I prevent it from happening? And then if it does happen, how can I fix it? Right. So it's kind of like along those lines, right? Sure. Yeah. And, and, um, so what, how, how does this play a role? Cause I, I want people to, and again, we're not going to like get into like all sorts of insurance policies that you buy, you should buy or anything like that. But I just, I just want people to kind of understand how does this play a role as a, as an insurance agent? Like why is it important for you to think as like a risk manager of sorts? Well, the details are very important, you know, when we're talking yeah. through potential insurance products, it's good to understand, you know, their business, you know, how they operate, um, you know, those different facets you know, make yeah. a difference. And, and we just, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's good to hear the carriers. A lot of carriers like to hear, you know, what kind of loss prevention techniques, you know, they're using and, mm -hmm. you know, how they're, they're helping, you know, lessen the opportunity of those claims happening. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's good to talk through those details and, you know, the insurance products, you know, that we offer, you know, we're, we're always looking at, you know, protecting clients. I mean, obviously we, we can't protect from every single, you know, scenario, but it's, sure. um, you know, we, we, uh, we definitely talk through the details and, and try to, you know, provide an option that, that mm -hmm. fits the client's needs. Okay. And, um, I, I know for a lot of stuff, it's kind of like ends up being kind of mitigation. So something happens, you having the funds to be able to, to mitigate or, or, or fix that problem is, uh, is pretty, is pretty important. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I know somebody who was recently hit by a cyber attack. So hackers and, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, they, they did not have a cyber insurance policy. And so it could affect, you know, their clients and, you know, it could, it could, it could really impact their business because of, you know, what, what, what costs there might be associated with that. So, um, you know, that's kind of like an example. Um, so, um, what are, what are some ways that people can start getting into the kind of that risk management mindset, like kind of start stepping in that direction? What well, I like, you know, that you brought up Tim Ferriss and that, that fear, um, you know, experiment. I, I think it is good to look at the probability of, of losses, you know, um, mm -hmm. looking at their operations and, you know, mm -hmm. seeing the things that are commonplace in that industry, you know, and, and building a plan around that. Um, I know you mentioned cyber, you know, but, you know, loss prevention can look different in different businesses. Um, you know, yeah. uh, for instance, like a roofing company, you know what I mean? A lot of, you know, depending what state you're in, you know, I know there's, there's standards like OSHA where you have to, you know, work in, in a certain uh, way to protect yourself. Um, mm -hmm. But whether, you know, like a roofer, you know, tying off, you know, while you're up there, you know, it's, you know, these, these things are things that can help lessen, you know, the, the severity and the frequency of accidents. Mm -hmm. um, cyber insurance, you know, if you're a doctor's office, you know what I mean? The, the security that you have, you know what I mean? I know the, you know, the big thing with that is the, the type of information that you store for clients, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, um, it, it's good to kind of talk through those, those things and make sure, you know, they're doing the best they can at protecting information. And, but, uh, you know, whether, yeah. you know, whether, whether, you know, these are two different business types, but and they have different exposures, but even cyber, you know, maybe something that a contractor needs, you know what I mean? It's so it's really each, each company, you know, you can have construction companies doing similar operations, but they do things differently. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not a one size fits all. You really have to talk through the, the operations and, and get. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Well, it was, uh, it was target. Wasn't it target that whenever they had that big breach, it was it was through like a, a contractor like a HVAC company or something like that that was was working with them and since the HVAC company was breached they were able to then I think access some 
some of Target's records, and then I, I don't know if fishing was involved or what. But you know, there was uh, I believe it was that way, and, and a lot of people don't necessarily think about that. But like, there's a, there's a lot of things that can happen. I mean, that it, in for a business that uh, market issues or internal employee issues. Like what, what is a good process for people to go through to, to think about, you know, some of these risks, you know, to their business? It would like, is it like a SWOT analysis, a, a good example of a way to, to step into it? I think that would be a good experiment for any company. You know what yeah. I mean? Just to kind of understand, you know, their strengths and weaknesses. Um, mm hmm an opportunity you know I, i've done a swat analysis myself and i know that's it's impactful to see those things on paper and kind of work through that process yeah yeah so uh like with a swat analysis can you can you walk people through like a, a swat analysis um you know and and how to uh how to kind of go about thinking about that for their business like because it's what strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats right right yeah, and the strengths are, are like external. Uh, or I'm sorry, no the 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 strengths are internal, uh, and the weaknesses are also internal, right? And then the the uh, the opportunities and threats those are those are kind of like external things. So, so like what are how how do you go about kind of filling out that that like a SWOT analysis chart? Well, I'm just I haven't done that with clients um oh, okay uh, for my own business but yeah 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 all right right okay um so what are what are some examples of like uh you know some some of the internal threats that uh that people can run across in their business like what what are some of those risks internally sure i mean Anytime, you know, you have employees, you know, there's, there's injuries that can occur, you know, there's, yeah. um, you know, there's the way you handle uh, situations internally with employees, you know, um, there's, there's just a lot of variables um, in your, and how you process things within a company mm -hmm. that, that could open exposures. Um, so it's, it's probably, you know, I would say it's a good idea for them to do that. Um, Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a, there's a lot that can happen internally. I mean, in terms of like, uh, especially on the, the human side, um, I think people are even seeing that right now with like the great resignation and, and, uh, just difficulty with getting people to be productive and, and all that. I mean, there's, there's the physical mental issues of things and the morale and productivity, you know, those, those are some internal things that, that, uh, you know, I, unfortunately, I see a lot of people overlook some of that stuff. They 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 didn't think to plan ahead, and just think that like kind of the same old leadership is going to be effective, as opposed to you know seeing kind of the trends and and trying to adapt. Um, you know, trying to figure out how can you you bring some more of the flexibility to the workplace. How can you create a a better environment for people to work? So I think those are some of the things. Um, that, that people should think about. Um, what about like, uh, you know, equipment and, and technical type issues? I mean, we talked a little bit about like cybersecurity, but, but what do you, we like for a contractor? I mean, sometimes, I mean, their equipment is like, I mean, they're shut down if they're, if, if their equipment gets broken or, or, or something like that, or, or if there's some sort of uh, you know, theft, uh, something like that. Right. Right. The maintenance of the vehicles and, yeah. You know, the loss prevention with, you know, uh, how you store the equipment or tools. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, how, how you store it, how you go about, uh, uh, you know, where, where um, you know, where the location is, you know, is it likely that, uh, I mean, is it in a, in a high crime area? Is it in a floodplain? You know, those are things that, to, to think about. But also, I think it's, it's interesting because there can be, I think even threats on the positive side of things. So, so if like <laughs> one example that I, that I, I know, and I've seen very commonly in working with uh, uh, sales teams is like that. Have you ever seen it where it's it like somebody gets a sale, they close the deal 
And then it's kind of like, I'm just, I'm just going to chill. You know, I'm going to take the time to celebrate. I'm going to chill and, uh, you know, get back hard at it like next week <laughs> or maybe tomorrow. But, you know, they kind of slack off for the rest of the day because like, ah, oh, I closed the deal. All right, I'm good. You know, that, that's, a, that's a threat from a positive thing happening, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. So um, what are some other steps that, uh, that business owners can take in terms of risk management? What other advice would you have for them? You know, I, I think there's, there's so much information, you know, out there, um, you know, that's shared among businesses. Um, it's good to kind of know what's trending in your industry. Mm, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, I mean, because that competition, because if you're thinking about the external threats, right? Yeah, that, that's that kind of that competition, competition in the, the marketplace, maybe even the business environment. You know, I, I've seen companies where they had like a, a, a great location, but then the roads were were changed, the traffic flows were changed in such a way as to where that location ended up being terrible and they had to shut down, like a little diner. Mm -hmm. I've seen that with little diners, um, you know, because, uh, you know, a highway ended up kind of coming through and, and making access difficult. And so they, they ended up getting shut down. That's good. Um, but what, what else have you seen? Have you seen like, what, what example of like market shifts have you seen that, that might get people kind of thinking? Mm -hmm. You know, I just, with the pandemic, um, oh, you know, yeah. there's, there's certainly been, you know, businesses that are having to pivot and, and change the way they market, you know, change the way they operate, um, mm -hmm. you know, with restrictions and different things. So, um, you know, there's been, you know, some creative, creative things I've seen folks doing, uh, certain industries, you know, that have helped them, um, I guess, you know, kind of, uh, make it through some of these tough times so yeah yeah that, uh, that's been a huge example of market shifts um you know and 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 for folks who were kind of already thinking about okay seeing the the uber eats and seeing the the trends of uh, uh what are some of the other ones postmates i think that's another one um you know even before COVID, those things were starting to trend. I mean, we had started doing our groceries through with an Instacart probably, I don't know, a year, you know, a year before COVID, maybe, maybe six months before COVID. So we already kind of started and, you know, we were loving it. Um, but, uh, you know, for it's like the restaurants that, that were able to, to think ahead and see those trends and they were already starting to pivot or they were already on Uber Eats. It wasn't quite as difficult or detrimental as the ones that had to like figure out, okay, how are we going to make this work? You know, how, how oh shoot, our, our menu isn't online anywhere. And how are we going to get online? Are we equipped to take orders? Uh, I mean, that's an excellent example uh, of the, you know, the ones that were maybe able to survive versus the ones that didn't. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, one of the things that I always kind of want to ask you about, like, so we, we were kind of talking about like, uh, uh, you know, the, the external threats and, you know, w what are some ways to, for like people to plan for like natural disasters? Cause like those, those happen, those are out of the blue, but those can like seriously shut down. What, what are some ways for people to kind of like think ahead about that sort of stuff? I mean, it's, um, you know, those things are, are not things that folks are have any control over. Obviously, you know, flooding, you know, hail, these, mm -hmm. these things going to come out of nowhere. But, um, you know, just doing a little research ahead of time, you know, and, and there, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying that you can, you can mitigate every scenario, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have seen situations where folks, you know, were aware of, of certain, um, just say uh, challenges, you know what I mean? But they hadn't yeah. seen anything happen from it, you know what I mean? So from past experience, that yeah. there'd been no repercussions. But, you know, I, I just, I think um, being aware of the potential of certain losses, um, 
you know, and evaluating the cost to mitigate that, you know, may may change an opinion about the coverage. You know what I mean? If you knew what it cost and the, you know, the probability of it happening, you know, it may, uh, it may be something that you'd want to consider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I've even seen it where like people don't necessarily think about the potential for, you know, like sewer backups or, or, or flooding. And, um, you know, so they, they didn't necessarily, and their, their insurance agents never really brought it up to them. You know, they didn't even realize that it wasn't even covered in their policies. And so, you know, because there was some sort of sewer backup that caused some sort of damage. I mean, even if you're in a strip mall, especially if you're in a strip mall with a, a restaurant, you know, in there, because unfortunately not all the grease always gets disposed of properly. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're at right. Not, you know, it, it not, not hit, you know, trying to ding restaurants here, but it just, it happens. Um, you know, that, that's a good one too. Yeah. So, um, so what, because what, we're going to be kind of wrapping up here um, in in the next just few minutes, but what what are what are some of the most common like blind spots people have when it comes to risks in their business? Like what are what are the biggest ones that you've you've seen? I just um, sometimes businesses, um, you know, when they're in growth mode, they they start to take on other opportunities that are kind of ancillary you know, products or services and, mm, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's good to, you know, as your business changes, you know, to reach out, you know, let your insurance agent, the insurance company know, you know, these changes in operations because, you know, they may or may not be covered. Um, you know, they may be rating you for, for one thing and, you know, that's, that's what you've, you've always done, but now, you know, your business has grown and you've, you've taken on these new things. You know, sometimes it's, you know, even with the pandemic, with pivoting, you know, and trying to find other revenue streams and different things. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, with, as we were talking about, like, if you have drivers delivering, uh, like, food for you, like, in the restaurant, you have to think about, like, what, what kind of coverage do I need? Like, what happens if they were to hit somebody along the way, you know, and they, and, and they, they happen to mention <laughs> to that person, oh, yeah, I was delivering for such and such restaurant. Well, they could potentially go after you, right? That happened to Domino's, right? And that's why they kind of shut down their uh, that 30-minute, remember the, the 30 minutes or less deal? Yeah, yeah. Well, they got into too many accidents, you know, trying to deliver pizzas and uh, too many insurance claims. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's something to think about. I mean, I, I've seen that a lot where, like, people will – um, let uh, let their employees drive the the company vehicles, even for like personal stuff, and they don't realize that 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 they, they might not even be covered for that, right? Isn't there isn't there like a difference between you know work time, personal time, and and the use of vehicles? It's definitely an important detail. You know, you yeah. you want to make sure your policy is is going to respond if they're. Yeah, using their vehicle, you know, during business hours for business purposes. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great example. Well, awesome, awesome. And well, if uh, if somebody wants to to get a hold of you, uh, I know we we had the scroll on a, on the uh, the video, but if you're just listening audio, um, what's what's a good way to uh, for people to get a hold of you if they just want to kind of talk through, you know, what they've got going on in their business and just get some additional ideas about like where some of their blind spots might be and, and what they might want to think about in terms of, uh, you know, protecting themselves and, and their livelihood. Sure. Sure. Uh, best way is just to reach out to me by phone. Uh, my number's on the screen, 314-960-2192. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. So again, to kind of wrap up today, it's important to live a life of significance and, I think at the end of the day, you want to feel like people at, at your eulogy are going to say good things about you. You know, they're, they're going to talk about the impact that you had on their lives. Uh, there's few people who say, you know, who want people talking about, you know, the big bank account at the, at the, at the eulogy. You know, they want people saying, we really love this person because of how they affected our lives. So think about that, you know, as, as you're, as you're trying to build your vision for how you live a life of significance. And then, Put on your risk management hat on your, hat on your business. And that was part two is, is risks 
that there are many risks in your business and, and surprises happen. But there's a difference between you know, an expensive surprise that you have coverage for, you know, that, that you've thought through and that you've got a plan for, uh, whether that's the money or just, you know, you, you're, you know that you're able to pivot in some way versus, uh, you know, these things happen and you're, you're, it's, a, it's just a straight up surprise. There's no plan. There's no action. So it take, get some good advisors around you. You know, we help that with our clients, just kind of get an idea. And then obviously Joe, you know, he can help you think through a lot of the things that he's seen in small businesses and, and just how to protect yourselves. You know, there's no need for expensive surprises um, that, that leave you vulnerable uh, without, without a plan. So thank you so much for listening today. Thank you so much, Joe, for being on the show. And, uh, and remember, this, don't just listen to this. Do it. This is a call to action. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. But now is the time to put what we talked about into practice. Remember, your family, employees, and community are depending on you to rise up and win. The great news is you're not alone. You're part of a resurgence of entrepreneurs who are ready to take their business, life, and impact to the next level. And we're going to do it together. This show is powered by Time for Success, where we help business owners every day who want more freedom and wealth while building a legacy of positive impact. Please follow Time for Success on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube for more helpful strategies and tools for creating the business and life of your dream.